This week, it's lies, lies, and even more lies. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape Global 20 Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the week ending August 6th, 2021. Mark Twain said, It's easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. Well, actually, that's fake news because no one has ever been able to prove Mark Twain said those exact words. What he actually said was, the glory which is built upon a lie soon becomes a most unpleasant encumbrance. There was a youth vaping epidemic in this country before the coronavirus, before this subcommittee was even created, and before Acting Commissioner Woodcock took the helm at FDA. And the youth vaping epidemic unfortunately continues today. More than 20% of high schoolers vape. Rajna Krishnamurphy. Lies, lies, and even more lies. The CDC National Youth Tobacco Survey reveals the truth about youth vaping, which is far from an epidemic. How far from an epidemic is youth vaping? Youth alcohol use is 37%. Pot smoking and illegal drug use is at 20%. Binge drinking is at 16%. Youth experimentation with a vape is 13%, but actual youth vaping, that's only 3%. Stupid is as stupid does, but it doesn't end there. Newsweek says big food is the new big tobacco. General Foods Corporation and Kraft Foods is owned by Philip Morris? What? No, it isn't. Kraft Foods divorced Altria in 2007, just like it divorced PMI in 2008. Tobacco 21 right around the corner for the UK because the Secretary of State for Health says they need to crack down on under 21 tobacco use. What? Those plans are supposedly no longer under consideration. Are you stupid or something? The only reason smoking rates are increasing in the UK is because vape shops were not considered essential services during the COVID lockdowns. Doing so drove 600,000 people back to smoking in the UK. See? Cigarette smoking dropped from 25% in 2007 to 15% in 2019. Then the COVID lockdowns happened and people couldn't get their vapes. So they went back to smoking. You know what else is even worse? Because vapes weren't accessible during the lockdowns, 18 to 21 year olds went to their local corner shop or stole analog cigarettes from their relatives and then began smoking. Mark Twain was right. The glory which is built upon a lie soon becomes the most unpleasant encumbrance. Ain't nothing to it but to get into it. Last week, I reported on a conspiracy theory involving Fort Detrick and COVID science published in the BMJ, showing a volley progression and COVID progression and how they're indistinguishable without a PCR test. Well, this week's vaping news research once again found this story making its way around the globe. From Italy, speculating the U.S. military spread a volley to Europe via blood donation program, to Malaysian influencers asking people to sign a petition to the World Health Organization. Plus, even more Chinese publishers who are asking the World Health Organization for an investigation. And even Italy's patient zero being in Veneto on September 3rd. Bulletin boards all around the world are discussing which lie to believe. Did the U.S. lie? Did China lie? Are they both lying? Or are they both partially telling the truth at the exact same time? Whatever the actual situation, the peasants of the world lose either way. Just like with the lies being told about vaping, we all know about Rajna Krishnamurphy and his youth vaping crusade. But now, senators are asking the FDA and the FTC to investigate Juul buying its way into an academic journal. Senators Elizabeth Warren and Richard Blumenthal have co-signed separate memos to both the Federal Trade Commission and the Food and Drug Administration to investigate Juul's decision to buy out a full edition 
of the American Journal of Health Behavior for $51,000. The full spread included 11 studies across the journal's May-June issue that all seemed to make Juul look like the healthiest smoking alternative possible. Once again, here we go with politicians being out of touch with reality. Science isn't science without being published and peer-reviewed. I don't care how accurately the science was done or how revolutionary the findings are. If you want it published, you must pay to get the article published. And you have to pay even more if you want the article classified as open access for the world to read about it. Here's a list of the fees charged by scientific journals to publish research. This is nothing new. And personally, I think it is pathetic. But what's even more pathetic is these elected officials wasting taxpayer money to launch another useless investigation. Moving on to PMI's smoke-free future, being up in smoke, Philip Morris aims that by 2025, 50% of its revenue will come from smoke-free products, aka ICOS, heat not burn products. Well, it's kind of hard to do that if you don't own the patent. Altria halts ICOS expansion after British American Tobacco wins patent infringement ruling. PMI is essentially the international arm of Altria after the two separated in 2008. And ICOS is available in 64 countries, including the U.S. But now British American Tobacco has put a halt to ICOS as an administrative judge upheld the BAT patents. PMI isn't going to take this lightly and has requested an agency review of the judge's findings. The investigation should wrap up by September 15th. Maybe that explains why Altria is moving at a glacial pace in rolling out the device domestically knowing it will owe British American Tobacco a fee for every ICO stick sold in violation of this patent infringement. Meanwhile, Japan Tobacco launches its version of Heat Not Burn, called Plume X, to gain back PMI 70% ICOS market share. Pre-sales of Plume X began on July 26th and will be available at the company's online shop starting August 17th. The Plume X features new technology called Heat Flow, aim to improve suction. The feeling of sucking is also excellent compared to the previous model called Plume S 2.0, which users said was not worth sucking. According to Newsweek Japan, well, that sucked almost as much as Newsweek's opinion piece from the US. Big food is the new big tobacco. We must take them on. Many of us believe that a combination of counting calories and following restrictive diets is the key to losing weight and getting healthy. Like believing that the world is flat, it's intuitive, but not supported by science. Diet fads and unhelpful dietary guidelines are what has got us here. A true scientific understanding of what natural foods we should be eating is what's going to get us out of it. Today's children will have a worse health outcome than their parents. One in five children are obese. In the UK, 10% of four and five-year-olds are obese. Diabetes isn't just a health problem. It's an economic one. Medical cost of type two diabetes alone is $50 billion more than from smoking tobacco. Globally, that translates to $2.6 trillion a year. It's time to treat big foods the same way we treat big tobacco. Hold on a minute. I'll stop you right there, buddy, because you're wrong. A two-second Google search reveals Kraft divorced Altria. The real issue causing health problems and my obesity is all the lies being perpetuated because of greed. While I agree that most obesity isn't caused by a sedentary lifestyle, and I agree that there's poor quality information about the food that we eat, I think you are totally ignoring the outright lies corporations and our own government tells us every day right before our very eyes. No one questions how pharmaceutical companies and prestigious doctor groups lobby Congress and then Congress passes laws requiring everybody to further their lies with even more lies. Kind of like how this bottle right here contains nicotine and nicotine is an addictive chemical. Except when you realize it doesn't contain any nicotine.
but the government required the manufacturer to lie to you. It's not even a matter of black and white anymore because none of them are ever telling the truth. It's gotten so bad that people simply accept it's impossible to determine where public health guidance ends and industry interests begin. We have a raging opioid epidemic in this country and no one even blames the real villain. Hello? The villain is Purdue Pharma, who lobbied Congress to allow them to keep selling more pills than there are people in the country. Meanwhile, Rajna Krishnamurthy and his cohorts distract the public with their useless investigations and hearings. Kind of like how Turkmenistan's president is flying high as a kite in another propaganda stunt to hide his government's new rules. To ban vaping with unfiltered cigarettes. And now, tobacco products will only be available in specialized sections of food and non-food stores. In plain black and white packaging. All aimed to appease the WHO. Who, by the way, has postponed talking about new and emerging tobacco products at COP9 until COP10. New and emerging tobacco products? They're talking about vaping and harm reduction products. Reported in SIG Magazine from Italy, since the meeting will be held by video conference, sensitive and controversial issues postponed to COP10. These include the position to be taken on tobacco harm reduction products. The leader among these is certainly the United Kingdom, where the electronic cigarette is promoted and supported by public health institutions and the Ministry of Health. So much so that the intergroup on vaping of the British Parliament, in a recent report, asked the government to give battle at the Conference of the Parties, going so far as to suggest cutting funding to the World Health Organization in the event that the next COP9 will support for electronic cigarettes and for product at reduced risk, a position that is contrary to the UK policy. In other words, if they're not going to support harm reduction products, we're going to stop funding the World Health Organization. So rather than risk losing funding for taking a position that's opposed to vaping, the World Health Organization's organizer simply tables the discussion until COP10, just to avoid the topic altogether. Just like how vaping companies flee some states amid tax law confusion. Published in BloombergLaw.com, vaping companies have struggled to comply with the new mandate to register in states where they operate. So like many of the 10,000 businesses struggling to comply with the congressional mandate, Dana Schacht, CEO of O2 Vape, says she's been forced to abandon business in some states. Hmm. Wonder who's going to benefit from these burdensome regulations. Whatever happened to caveat emptor? Where the buyer beware. Hell, with all the lies being told, maybe we should demand caveat venditor, where the seller beware of their products. Nope, the pharmaceutical companies made sure of that. They all but legalized murder by fake medicine. And here's some signs to prove it. Survival is not the case for at least 122,000 African children under five years of age who dies every year as a result of being treated with fake anti-malaria drugs. In fact, this study found the pandemic of falsified drugs goes far beyond malaria and over 175 countries have now reported poor quality medicines to the WHO. That subsequently determined one in 10 medical products in low income countries is of poor quality. But they won't tell us how many fake drugs exist elsewhere because big money interests ensure you don't get to know anything. I bet you didn't know that the same Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021 that requires vape shops to register with the ATF also changed the way generic drugs are being labeled. In order to determine whether labeling updates would provide a public health benefit, the secretary may enter into cooperative agreements or contracts with public or private entities to review the available scientific evidence concerning a drug or seek public input. Meanwhile, U.S. law states generic drugs don't have to be identical to brand name drugs. Sure, the active ingredients need to be the same, but the extra ingredients that cause or mitigate side effects 
Well, that's something of a trade secret that you don't need to worry about. Because we have plenty of industry lobbied regulations keeping you safe. Unlike in Malaysia, where the vape industry is still begging for regulations, claiming 80% of Malaysians want the vape industry regulated. Taking on the habit, how regulating the vape industry can breathe fresh air into the Malaysian economy. For decades now, vaping has helped smokers kick the habit, provided people with harm-reduced alternatives to cigarettes, and created a thriving black market worth billions of ringgit across the globe. But it's no secret that Malaysia has been slow to reap both the public health and economic benefits that the vape industry can provide. Despite the government's efforts in mitigating the crash, with a wage subsidy or cash handouts for disadvantaged groups, and support for small businesses, these short-term solutions have placed further stress on the nation's already weakened finances. Official reports from the health ministry reveal that there are over a million vapors in Malaysia. However, regulation on its use have yet to materialize, leaving both consumers and businesses fishing in the dark. Regulating the vape industry can herald in the coming of Malaysia's first ever unicorn, as homegrown companies like Nasty Worldwide prove to be able to dominate the domestic market and become trendsetters across the world. Is this really what the Malaysian people want? Or is this just another corporation looking to capitalize on government regulations to ensure that they're the only ones who profit? Am I just spouting oligarch propaganda lies plastered on the internet? Leave your comment below and let me know what you think about these Malaysians wanting more regulations. One thing is for certain, disposable e-cigarette market is set for epic growth story. Also for certain, more than three quarters of U.S. doctors wrongly believe that nicotine directly contributes to cancer and cardiovascular disease. All because of lies and Bloomberg-funded WHO propaganda. Meanwhile, in Romania, vaping is cause for controversy. WHO says it's a health hazard, and British experts recommend it. You know what? This is the same scripted message now playing out in Romania. Here we go again. Michael Bloomberg and the WHO chief points out nicotine is highly addictive, so they should be regulated to extinction. But public health authorities who decide their actions based on science want to promote vaping to quit smoking because it works. Romania has 330,000 vapors choosing a harm reduction product and 5 million smokers looking for the truth. But instead of getting the scientifically proven truths, they get more lies and more contravening arguments to obfuscate the truth. What is the truth? Vaping is helping smokers quit and there is no evidence that it lures children to smoking. It may even be deflecting young people who otherwise would smoke away from cigarettes. But the media keeps lying about vaping rates. And now Laura Dern, who doesn't punish her teenagers, has just become an American Lung Association ambassador to educate everyone about the need to address youth vaping in schools. Almost 20% of high school students are vaping. No, they're not. 20% of kids have tried a vape, but only 3% actually use it. Maybe you should go back to being a big little lie star instead of trying to be another NGO shill spotting already disproven propaganda. Kind of like this deputy principal armed with $4,000 worth of vaping paraphernalia claiming vaping is a scourge sweeping through high schools in New Zealand. Maybe John McDonald should be glad he found vaping paraphernalia instead of cigarettes on these kids. Typical crap based on lies and hyperbole. Unlike this next article, spoken from the heart. Vaping bad, but nicotine and alcohol are just fine. Hmm... Can anyone explain to me the logic of allowing regular cigarettes to be freely sold, but banning the sale of nicotine e-cigarettes? If we banned all nicotine containing cigarettes, I could see some sense in it. But making out that vaping is somehow worse than smoking 
is patently ridiculous. Of course, we know that banning these items will turn out to be counterproductive, as is evidenced by the out-of-control illegal drug situation and, in fact, that all illegal items are still readily available, even though it's prohibited, shows how easily a ban is subverted. A crackdown on retail outlets will only mean that criminal gangs will become involved in the trade and funnel more money into their pockets. We don't ban alcohol, which is by far the most dangerous drug in the world. So, our war on drugs is both hypocritical and ineffective. My suggestion is that we institute a nationwide campaign to encourage minors to smoke marijuana, which is less health damaging than both nicotine and alcohol, and can be easily made to seem fashionable. With a little celebrity endorsement, we can then move on to weaning drinkers off of alcohol, and on to heroin, which is medically neutral, and has fewer damaging social impacts than alcohol consumption. The police resources that are now wastefully directed towards prosecuting unenforceable drug laws could then be channeled into more valuable efforts, such as investigating political corruption and controlling football hooliganism. Sincerely, Bruce Highland, an email published in coastcommunitynews.com.au. Well, at least he wasn't spouting another propaganda lie. Moving on to the weekly public service announcement. How vaping will help you stop smoking cigarettes. First, let's talk about the dangers of smoking and how tobacco smoking affects your body. Tobacco combustion deposits tar and carbon dioxide into your body and increases stroke rates two to four times that of a non-smoker. Smoking also increases your chances of having a heart attack and damages your vascular system, which eventually leads to atherosclerosis, narrowing of the artery walls, and reduces blood flow throughout your entire body. Next comes damage to your immune system and is scientifically proven to occur from the very first puff on a combustible cigarette. Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, systemic lupus, and even type 2 diabetes are all worsened and non-exclusively caused by cigarette smoking. As for your lungs, smoking damages the airway and the alveoli in your lungs and eventually results in emphysema, bronchitis, COPD, asthma, and even pneumonia can be caused by smoking. Bad breath, stained teeth, cotton mouth, gum disease, and reduced ability to taste and smell are all associated with cigarette smoking. Vaping is 95 to 99.5% safer than smoking. And while nicotine is as addictive as caffeine, without the additives from combustible cigarette smoke, it is easy to break the cycle of addiction and wean yourself off of this beneficial drug. If you are a heavy cigarette smoker, I can personally attest to the fact vaping was the only thing that empowered me to give up smoking. Vaping is not smoking and a much healthier option to save people's lives. It's also why TCCI calls for greater awareness of vaping as a quit smoking tool. Published in the advocate.com.au, e-cigarettes will become prescription only in October this year leading Tasmanian's peak business organization to call for greater education on vaping as a way to quit smoking. The TGA has essentially made it illegal to import nicotine vaping liquid without a doctor's prescription. In Tasmania, there are a significant number of people who currently vape as a less harmful alternative to traditional cigarettes. These people will soon be told they cannot import their vapes from overseas. But are going to be required to get a prescription to access this less harmful product. So Tasmanian Chamber of Commerce and Industry Chief Executive, Michael Bailey. There is a significant body of work, including from Public Health England, that suggests that nicotine vaping is 95% less harmful than traditional cigarettes, and that they are a very effective smoking cessation tool. Meanwhile, Health Minister Jerry Rockliffe will not draw on this request as the Tasmanian government will continue to follow the recommendations of the World Health Organization and its suggested regulatory framework. Ah, so that's why the WHO decided to table harm reduction from COP9 to COP10. Effectively tabling the discussion means all these countries' health ministers get to kick the ball down the road for the next guy to deal with. And... 
All the while, ensure smoking kills even more people. Along comes Consumer Choice Center Research Manager, Marianne Chaplia, and Michael Landol, Director of the World Vapors Alliance, to explain why the WHO is wrong about vaping. Last week, the WHO published yet another report which spreads fake news and false myths about vaping. Despite the tool being recognized as 95% less harmful than conventional smoking, the WHO's scientifically unjustified vaping witch hunt could cost millions of lives. Among the worn out and debunked theories peddled by the WHO, report on global tobacco epidemic, new and emerging products, is the so-called gateway effect theory. This dangerous and misleading theory has long since been disproven by numerous studies where upwards of 50,000 smokers are using vapes as a gateway out of and not into smoking every year. Rather than focus on the all-important goal of beating smoking, the WHO is turning its guns on vaping, the most powerful smoking cessation tool on the planet, and kicking the can two years down the road to discuss it during COP10. They clearly find it more important to fall into line with the narrow-minded quit-or-die approach trumpeted by Bloomberg than accept reality. Fewer smokers will quit and more will die because they refuse to accept harm reduction to quit smoking. The WHO systematically ignores the wealth of scientific evidence pointing to the benefits of vaping, not to mention the firsthand experience of millions upon millions of vapors. Unfortunately, this anti-vaping approach has spillover effects to other jurisdictions, especially low- and middle-income countries but also the European Union. The weight of research and real-world evidence show that progressive vaping policies can help 19 million European smokers to quit, let alone the 1.1 billion smokers all around the world. Restricting or banning access to vaping will do nothing but cost lives. And the WHO will soon learn this painful lesson if they keep ignoring science and consumers. They aren't the only ones saying this. Published in Africa's Medical Digest, Medical Brief, anti-vaping advice by World Health Organization risks millions of lives. Jump into the chase, both articles clearly state the exact same thing. The WHO needs to change its position on harm reduction products, or people will needlessly die. One last quick bit before we wrap up for today. Global e-cigarette brand Relics has appointed a Manchester agency to launch their product in the UK. One day agency is charged to build up awareness of Relics with an exciting ooh campaign around London. Relics, the Chinese giant of electronic cigarettes, also opens in Italy. It's among the top five e-cigarette companies in the world. And suffice to say that in just Four years, this has been able to conquer 60% of the Chinese market. With 30 different innovative technologies, more than 170 patents, and 1.2 million euros in research and development, it's no wonder they sold $585 million worth of products in 2020. Relics is already selling products in the UK, France, Germany, Spain, Canada, Colombia, New Zealand, Indonesia, and the United Arab Emirates. Well, that wraps up the Global 20 Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the week ending August 6, 2021. Please go become an advocate and fight for your right to vape, just like Dr. Karen Malcott calling on India's health ministry to work with those who believe in the benefits of harm reduction and create one of the most profound public health shifts of all time. It really only takes a few minutes out of your day, but it can mean the world to someone who quits smoking because of your advocacy. I appreciate every single one of you for subscribing and watching this weekly vaping news, science and advocacy report. Until next week, be good to each other and keep on vaping.